Are you becoming a neural networks guru? If so, do you already understand, in detail and depth, the backpropagation derivations? Do you know the equations behind how that code works? If so, then you don't need this vid, but if you haven't done that already, join me. This is part zero, and we're doing the rationale for learning backpropagation. And we'll proceed with a multi-part series that will break down the equations in great depth, giving you not only just the mathematics, but an intuition as to how this works. Join me, I'm Dr. Aliana J. Moren, and you're here with me in AI After Hours. There are a couple of good reasons why the backpropagation method is so much more widely understood than contrasted divergence for the Boltzmann machine. Most notably, the entry to learning and understanding backpropagation is much, much lower. To get through this, you need first semester calculus. You need to know the chain rule. In contrast, to understand the Boltzmann machine, you really need to have first semester graduate level physics, specifically statistical mechanics. Another differentiating factor in the barriers to entry for the Boltzmann machine versus the backprop is that the backprop code is pretty simple. In fact, if you like to write nice tight code, you can get that down to just a few lines. Whereas, if you're working the Boltzmann machine contrast of divergence algorithm, that's a much more complex algorithm and it takes a lot more code. The sad but true result of all of this is that most neural networks, including deep learning practitioners, can pretty much get their way through backpropagation. They may have worked their way through an online tutorial of some sort, or even written their own code. Regrettably, very, very few have a comparable understanding of, of the Boltzmann machine, and in particular, they don't understand the contrast of divergence algorithm. What's really troublesome is that most practitioners don't understand the interplay between these two algorithms when they're expressed in a deep learning architecture, the kind that you can access so easily using TensorFlow and Keras. So here's what you need if you're going to be a neural networks slash deep learning practitioner and you don't want to be caught out feeling less than totally on top of your game. First of all, you really need to understand that backprop algorithm. It's the baseline. It's the fundamental portion of neural networks and deep learning. You really need to know the derivations of those equations. You need to be able to work it through. Once you've done that, it's important to go beyond just cranking through the math and have a little intuition as to what those equations really mean, what they imply, because that's fundamental to the deep learning revolution. This is why we went from backpropagation to the Boltzmann machine algorithm. Then, once you've got backpropagation as your solid frame of reference, then you can understand the relationship between the Boltzmann machine operationally maybe not the contrast or divergence training algorithm, but how the Boltzmann machine functions with regard to the back prop. That gives you a pretty good contrast and compare. Here's the gist. If you're not going to get fancy, if you're going to treat a MLP trained with back prop as one kind of neural network and a autoencoder trained using contrast or divergence, this is a Boltzmann machine, which you can make look like an MLP. If you're going to treat each of these as two different networks that you can contrast and compare, then you can move on and understand how it is that you build structures involving the two methods. Now here's where we are as a result. Learning back propagation is like you're being Luke Skywalker and you're training with Obi-Wan Kenobi. It's an important step. Luke couldn't have defeated the Death Star without Obi-Wan. But once he got that done, he went back and he trained with Yoda. Two different levels of training. So you master back prop first, then you start to think about the Boltzmann machine and everything that it implies. The focus for this video series is on the back propagation method. We're going to go through the derivation of it and how that impacts how the network performs. We'll see its strengths and weaknesses. We'll understand by knowing the back propagation algorithm in detail what it implies for the next stage of neural networks that would be the deep learning. The next video in this series will give us an overview. Essentially, it'll be a table of content. Before we close, 
I'd like to share with you some resources that we already have in place. These will make it so easy for you to get solid written material with all those equations in easily accessed form. I've got a book in progress. You can find it by going to my website. That's alianajmarin.com. Once there, click on the book tab. That gives you access to the chapter drafts. So you just scroll down a little bit into that orangey colored box. Click on the link that takes you over to the table of contents. And then from there, the section that you'd probably find most relevant right now is part two with several chapters dealing with the transfer functions and backpropagation. Thanks for joining me. You've been in AI After Hours with Dr. AJ, where shortly, that is in the next few videos in this series, we'll be in that nirvana-like state of fewer words and more equations. To make sure that you get those next vids in the series, please do that like, subscribe, and notify thing. See you soon. And as always, thanks for joining me. And, as always, thanks for joining me. And, as always, thanks for joining me. See you soon.